NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. Today's program was furnished by a grant from the Beanery Depot and Deli featuring coffee, made-to-order subs, and snacks. The Beanery Depot and Deli in Mahoning Town. Welcome to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. I'm Alex Laverson, and again joining me is our producer, Mr. Angelo Parada. So lucky me, very lucky <laughs> me, right? You um, know, Mike's going to be happy that you said that. Oh man, he said he's praying for you out there. Oh good, at least I know that's at least one person because I know you're not. But, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're speaking of lucky, or you know, rather unlucky. How unlucky, though? are the Oakland Raiders because the Steelers traded away Martavis Bryant to the Raiders during the NFL draft and now Martavis Bryant is facing another suspension and Angelo that I feel like that's something that happened to the Browns honestly but I am so I, I it's not that I'm happy that guy that Bryant is facing a suspension it's just that the fact that the Steelers there were so many questions on whether Martavis Bryant or not should have stayed, and I feel like with this, with him facing another suspension, I think it just validates the Steelers. And basically, they it's like the Steelers, it's like the Raiders got nothing in return, and the Steelers validated their decision on trading him. Well, two things. Davis, back in the day, was one of the bad guys. Al Davis, that is correct. Okay, and so when you're one of the bad guys, bad things tend to happen. Right. Hello, Al Davis. Thank you for the gift you just received. Now, on the other hand, the Steelers are exceptional at picking out talent. They are. I think they're best in the league. Yeah, so they just know, and I and I and I trust. It's like yeah, we trusted the Steelers on their decision of getting rid of Bryant. Yeah, Martavis Bryant is obviously a talent, but he's too much of a knucklehead to keep on the team. And also, this like you said, the Steelers are able to identify talent. And look, they got uh, James Washington from Oklahoma State, great wide receiver. He's gonna. He's going to be a great deep threat, and you know him and Mason Rudolph, obviously both playing them both playing at Oklahoma State. They're going to have a long term chemistry because first of all, it's already there, you know. But of course, you know, I Mason Rudolph's not going to start, and probably for a few more years until Ben starts to uh, fizzle away. But it, it's just like it just all worked out perfectly. And another thing I do see happening though, and I just because it's a business first. I feel like Le'Veon Bell's going to be gone. And, okay, because, like you said... You can't make those predictions. I, it's just a business. You know what I mean? You know, it's just too much like... But there yeah. are times people stay because they want to be part of that tradition. Well, I, I think so, too. I mean, I I want Le'Veon Bell to stay. Bettis. Yeah. Uh, part of that tradition. Jerome Bettis is a... In his prime... I would choose Jerome Bettis probably over really any other running back, you know, during his era. They, I mean, there was no stopping him. He first of all, running, you're, he's wearing out the defense. And he's just like, you know, the boss. He just keeps, like, gr he just kept grinding it away, wearing away the defenses. And, man, he was funny and fun to watch, too. Um, now, I thought you said we weren't going to talk about that. 
things change. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he, he's he's trying to be a Notre Dame fan. I'm trying to be a Notre Dame fan. Yeah. What, I, what I'm trying to say is as far as the Steelers and the running back situation, um, after next year, they have James Conner. I don't know if he's a long-term answer or not. I, I don't think. But I think we both trust the Steelers to – you know, get it right. I'm not worried. I'm not, and I'm not either, because like you said, they just seem to draft. They just seem to draft well. They seem to get their players well, and um, man, it just, of course, if it wasn't for the villainous New England Patriots, I would be so confident of them going to another. And Paul Reed and Kodak. Exactly. The pay, the Patriots and their you know wicked ways, and um, how about these sponsors? Yeah, yeah, let's take a break and let's hear a word from our sponsors. And when we come back, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to talk about, but I have a feeling it's going to be something related to Notre Dame. <laughs> Sylvan Heights Golf Course in Newcastle, Pennsylvania features many amenities, lush fairways, and great greens, and many challenging shots. Your crowd will applaud. A short drive from Butler, Sharon, Pittsburgh, Elwood, and Youngstown. It's Sylvan Heights Golf Course in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Hey, Angelo Parada here for Croakers, Kegs, and Corks. And if that's not a mouthful, nothing is. But when you need a mouthful of that special brew, it's Croakers, Kegs, and Corks. You know, nothing tastes better than when you make it yourself. And I do some of that brew myself quite often. I like doing it. It's a great hobby and it's something you can do. Croker's Works Low Crate Catered right in Union Township. Give them a try. This program furnished by the Mad Unit. Mobile Auto Detailing. See Michael Sad at the madunit.com great dining experience welcome back to the cedar sports corner everybody and uh since i didn't want to disappoint you oh boy i figured we've talked about it enough of these weeks i'd bring it up the first game of the notre dame fighting Irish season is at home against michigan should be a win at home against michigan you got luck. Every, everybody's all fired up. Then it's Ball State. And as soon as they bounce out of there, you've got Vanderbilt. Yippee. Followed by a road game at Wake Forest. Okay. And another home game against Stanford. So you've played two rivals, Michigan and Stanford, at home, and you've had Cupcake City on the road. Now, you go down to Virginia Tech for a hoagie, right? Yeah, yeah I know, Johnny. Johnny, he's all happy because he got all the one. Mm -hmm. I think he maybe threw the ball. Right. You know, and then you come home against Pitt, Navy, Northwestern, and Florida State, and Syracuse. Your next toughest game is USC at the end of the season. They're going to, look, they're, Pitt and USC, those are obviously, I feel like, flip games. You can't tell me. We are, we already talked about on the flip previous what? show that Pitt's going to upset them. We talked about flip this before. Flip what? Like Flip Wilson, uh, Tiddly Wings. You act like upsets don't happen in college football. Because Here's the thing about Pitt. Pitt always beats a team they should never beat, and they always lose to a team they should never lose to. So if Notre Dame is going on a 10-game win streak or whatever, it looks like they're going to go win the national title, 
Pitt will beat them, and then they'll lose the following week to the following week to ITT Tech. That's just what Pitt does. Okay, <laughs> so you got to th- you got to use that type of logic. Anyway, with all seriousness, take though, two aspirin and call me in the morning. <laughs> you feel like you're looking at, jeez, oh man. No, listen, listen. That was like a Penn State schedule. Remember in previous shows we were talking about like how Penn State has an easy, usually has an easy schedule, and it's true. But Angela, I always feel like any time a team has it too easy, that's when upsets happen. That's when failures happen. All right. I want my... Go ahead. But Penn State plays somebody like Southwest Louisiana Ball State University Extension. <laughs> okay. Agree. They don't even play the, the regular. Mm-hmm. Speaking of ball, are the Pirates on the ball? Well, man, listen, they're 36 and 36. Six games back from first place. I understand, you know, over the weekend, they had it was a sellout game. You know, you see pictures online, on yeah, social media, how great it was. Them. I, I know, but it, it, it's, it's, what I'm trying to say, though, it's like, at this point, I don't even care about that. You know, I'd rather them win games and the atmosphere be crappy than the atmosphere be great and then them lose. Now... Obviously, I'd rather them both have a great atmosphere and win, but listen, I, I've i said this way too many times on previous shows. I'm not getting my heart set up on them. I'm obviously still going to root for them. I'm not going to get my heart set up on them. And you know, there was a lot of controversy um, when Neil Huntington said recently, he said something along the lines that if the, par- the Pirates would be able to compete more, win more, make more if the fans would show up to the games. This, yeah, is, coming after, it. this is coming after setting attendance records mm-hmm. all through that one period of time. Right. Okay, so... Yeah, again, listen, I, 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 I just don't even care. It's, i never seen an organization that is so resistant against their fan base. It is crazy. It's like they know they, they, they do they have any perception of public relations and, or do they care? I don't think they care. And honestly, it's kind of coming to the point now where you know not that I don't care about the pirates, I just don't care enough period just to get my hopes up on them. So, I mean, again, if they can manage to even get above 500 and stay that way, to the end of the year, you know, then I'm happy. But, man, this is the summer. There's not much going on other than baseball. You know what I mean? Other than LeBron watching, you know, I don't. I'm over LeBron. He's I, I'm actually. The show. What's up? He's watching the show. He's watching the show. Well, listen, Let's LeBron. Let's go to a break. He wants to see some commercials. All right. Yeah, out. yeah. When we get back, we're going to talk a little bit about LeBron watch. And hopefully, we won't have to talk about this anymore because I'm tired of talking about this every show. And that's one thing I think you and I can't agree on. So now a word from our sponsors. Parkstown Restaurant has been serving the greater Newcastle area with quality and experience in family dining and great entertainment. Their superb menu includes sides, wings, pizza, sandwiches, Italian entrees, American entrees, soups and salads. Parkstown Restaurant located at 2800 West State Street, Newcastle. Eat in or take out. Also, call Parkstown and ask about what's on tap for entertainment. 724-656-1453. 656-1453. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. Welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody, and thank you for joining our last segment of the day. 
Uh, during break, I was telling our producer how much I am actually getting sick of talking about LeBron. Not so much LeBron himself, but it's like during the summer, there's not too much to really talk about. Baseball is really the only thing going on. You know, Stanley Cup's over. We can, yeah, we can look forward to football, and then come August, start talking fantasy football, things like that. But your boy LeBron James. Now LeBron watch. Everyone's waiting to see where he goes. And honestly, Inch... I'm cleaning my glasses. You know why? Why? I want to be able to see what you're saying. You want to be able to see what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't understand what that meant, but all right. Anyway, Angelo, I, uh, I, I think it's coming to the point now where I'm so... I feel like I'm almost indifferent to LeBron. And I don't know if it was just the constant debate. You didn't have a breakup? What's up? You didn't yeah. have a breakup? Yeah, I, I, I might have to break up from LeBron. As a Cavalier fan, I actually kind of, there's a part of me that kind of wants him to go away almost. I mean, I feel like he, I feel like this, I do feel like this is too much of a, it's like a reality TV show almost. You know, where's LeBron going to go? Keeping up with the LeBrons or whatever. Honestly, I, I just I just don't care. I kind of want him away from Cleveland. I kind of want the Cavs to start fresh. Um, and yeah, he's still my favorite player. But is that it's all you hear on ESPN? That's basically all our viewers have been listening to and watching us, you know, is LeBron. I am so tired of this, is LeBron better than MJ debate? He's not, okay? It's... He might have more physical talent, but he's never going to have the same legacy as Jordan. Jordan's always going to be the GOAT. LeBron could be GOAT 1A, I guess, or whatever. But MJ's at the top. <laughs> I am just so – I'm, I'm over it, honestly. And See, I'm just letting him go. You're, letting me, you're just letting me get out of my just, system. I'm just letting you go. Do you, I guess, Angelo, it's like I wish we could go all summer without talking about LeBron. But – you know, if he goes to a new team, it's like we're going to have to talk about him again. Well, you know, because he's a wah wah. Well, he's a wah wah. Uh, you don't see anybody from the Indians going wah wah. Yeah, but who cares about the Indians? They're in first place. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. You know what? I remember Remember when Jim Tomey left? Was it early 2000s? Yeah, you know, and then LeBron. And then, you know, before then, Odell left. Jim Tomey left. Yeah, you know, LeBron left. Yeah, that city has been broken up with so many times. And, and breaking up is hard to do. Bra yeah, breaking up's hard to do. That I feel like that city is so... Cleveland? Have, yeah, Cleveland is so just, like, they have to have their hearts guarded, you know? I think they're just so traumatized. It's like they're they're afraid to fall in love again with their sports stars. Here the come teams. the Browns. Here come the Browns. Oh, my God. Homeward to Cleveland. Here come the Browns. No, 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 no. Listen. Honestly, it's like I kind of wish the Browns didn't even come back. Because it's like, what, did they, what have they done for the NFL? They can show you different ways to lose every week. They can. They can. Um, the Browns, it's like, yeah, WWCD. What would Cleveland do and then you don't do it? Remember those old bracelets, WWJD? Yeah, what would Jesus do, and then you do it? We're going to have WWCD, what would Cleveland do, and then you don't do it. And that's how you start a successful franchise. So everything the Browns would do, you just do the opposite of. And, um, Angelo, man, I, uh, I think, I'm, I guess, I'm, I'm really starting to become very almost anti-Cleveland, with the exception of the Cavs, almost. And uh, I, I'm just over it all. What do you got? To what do you have to say about that? Well, my thought is this: hope the Pirates can hang in there. LeBron, find whatever time you want. I don't think you're going to win. And uh, let's go Irish. From that, I have nothing else to say. I do have something to say. How about Pitt landing ten commitments on Father's Day? That is insane. Pit football in one day, in one day, got ten commitments. They went from, I believe, fourteenth of the ACC in recruiting rankings to the four to the fourth best 
in the ACC and number 25 overall. As I was saying, it's like Pitt football was Pitt football They're was calling right now. Pitt football's calling me right now, okay, and telling me to be quiet. But it's almost like Angelo. It's like they had Ten Commandments come in on Father's Day. We're like like collaborating on a big Father's Day surprise, you know. This is the year they beat Penn State. I, you know, they could. I mean, they, they're going to be in the top 25 moving forward. They're going to beat Penn State. They're going to flounder around, lose to Notre Dame, and get a nice bowl bit. Oh, uh, no. I think they'll beat Notre Dame, knock them out of title contention. That's what Pitt does. Listen, Pitt, they did that to Clemson two years ago. They were number two in the country. They upset them. Okay? Um, Pitt upset Miami last year, number two in the country. Pitt upset West Virginia. Number two in the country, 2007. I think Pitt is 0 and... It's something along the lines like Pitt is 5 and 0 against their last five opponents that were in the... ranked in the top three and Pitt was not ranked. That is crazy. So, Angelo... Time is running out. Time is running out, but do you, Notre Dame, do you want, really want your Notre Dame Irish to be facing Pitt? We have no problem. We have no problem. All right, but I think that's it for our show. Any last words? My last words are, Buckos keep pitching. And let's go, Pet. You guys have a good one, everybody. A special thanks to the YMCA for caring about the Lawrence County community and providing funding for this program. Thank you.